slipping the water down here because you seem to have an inordinate an amount of athletes and teams who uh, win all kinds of uh, honors and also uh, student athletes as well. I've always wondered what 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 it is. Uh, there must be some good parenting going on down here. That must be part of it uh, for sure. I didn't want to point out, by the way, that Joey Campion, you know, this kind of bothered me a little bit. Joey is not here tonight, but I noticed he had a 98.7 average, which means there's 1.3 still sitting out there somewhere. So, Joey, I know his coach, uh, you might get on him about that. He might be slacking off a little bit. Uh, but I, I just want you to know I was a pretty good student uh, myself. I made straight A's. My B's were a little crooked. But, um, <laughs> but I've always heard that there are basically three kinds of people in this world. Those who are good at math and those who aren't. <laughs> I thought you might be a quicker crowd than that. Also, student athlete. I think it's very important. Uh, I also was a, was a pretty good athlete in high school. I went to University of Missouri on a partial baseball ride. and. Uh, could have gone to Notre Dame, could have gone to Stanford. Uh, I just didn't like the way they recruited me. They never called, they never wrote, they never even came to see me play. So, you know, that's such a turnoff when that happens. Um, Bear Bryant, the great coach at Alabama, and a lot of you younger people would have no idea who I'm talking about, but trust me, he was great and he walked on water and all these kind of things. But he called one of his assistant coaches in one day and, and he said, Coach, what are you going to do when you go out on the trail and you start recruiting for Bama? What kind of kid are you going to look for? And the, the, the young coach looks up at Bear and he says, Bear, I'm going to get you the kind of kid that you can knock him down and he's going to bounce right back up. And you can knock him down harder and he's going to bounce right back up harder. Bear says, no, I want you to give me the kid that's knocking him down. <laughs> You know, Wally Hucknow and uh, the Red Raiders and uh, the, the good football teams they used to have. One of the first shows you had was with Lou Saban. Yep, yep. And what kind of guy was Lou? Lou was a great guy, a wonderful guy. And I did the show with him the year that he quit. And Very controversial. Uh, well, he was controversial in a lot of places. I mean, that guy's got a resume that's about a phone book. Uh, and uh, when, when I did the show with Lou, they were two and three, and Lou walked in on a Friday, and Ralph Wilson tells the story better than I do, but Lou walked in on a Friday before the game, they were gonna play the Colts, and Lou says, um, Ralph, um, I'm gonna quit. He says, what do you mean you're gonna quit? We're playing uh, Sunday. He says, well, I've, I've lost the team, and Ralph says, well, where'd they go? <laughs> and, and he meant it, he, he, he just said, and then, so we had just done a show the week before, and Lou actually called me and he said, do you want to do one more show? I said, are you kidding? Of course. So we did one more show and I asked him about why he quit. And, and Ralph, that's the reason that uh, Lou is not on the wall of fame. Is that Ralph still holds a grudge. That wasn't the first time he quit, Ralph. It was the second time he quit him twice. So despite the fact Lou should be on the wall of fame, and I'm on the committee too, we bring it up. Every year, somebody's the sacrificial lamb that brings up, oh, okay, Ralph, have you, have you mellowed now? Do you think it's time to talk about Lou? He'll always say, well, you guys don't have to wait long, and you can do what you, what you want. <laughs> but he says that every year. Does he say the same thing about Cookie Gilchrist? Pretty much. Well, Cookie, rest his soul, had no interest in... Cookie, unfortunately, was a very bitter man, and had... I never met Cookie. All I know is what I've heard, but he was just, he did was not interested in any kind of honors coming to Buffalo to be honored. So he made it very clear that even if they put his name on the Wall of Fame, he wouldn't be there. And Ralph thinks it's important, and I agree with him, that why should we honor you if you don't want the honor? My top memories of, 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 of covering sports in Buffalo, one of the tops, you go back that far, would be the 1980 Olympics in Lake Placid. I was there when the USA upset the Russians. I was at that game, and uh, that was special. That was really a, a, an amazing atmosphere because at the time the Cold War was still hot. Everybody hated the Soviet Union. They were a team that was supposedly unbeatable. Their top pros and uh, that USA team uh, beat them. 
Then, obviously, the four Super Bowls were, even though they didn't win, it was a great experience. It was, and I, and I was doing the Jim Kelly show that whole time, so I was able to kind of get a little more inside of what was going on at the, at, at all of the Super Bowls. I was able to spend some time with, like Kelly and Chris Berman from ESPN and Thurman and Bruce, when we would do our show earlier in the week and. I, I had a sense of what was going on, and uh, the 96 Olympics in Atlanta was a big thrill uh, covering that. And um, so there, you know, there the, the travel. I mean, the you know the Stanley Cup Finals in '99. Uh, also doing the Saber games, we we did the I did the intermissions and travel with the team for 10 years. Ted was really the voice of the Sabers. Even Rick acknowledged that back at the time. And Rick was the radio guy, but Ted was sort of the the face of the Sabers, if you will. And uh, Ted was a very exacting guy. He expected a lot. He was he was much for me initially more difficult to work with than uh, Rick. Rick's much more laid back, easygoing. Ted, because I replaced Rick Azar at the time, who was a good friend, and Pat Hannigan was on that crew at the, at, when I first started, and they're both gone now, Pat and Ted both. And um, I wasn't, I didn't feel totally accepted by them right away. That was a difficult time, I remember. I was sort of the third guy, and, uh, but that changed uh, uh, in time. And, and I didn't help things like, <laughs> one time uh, Pat Hannigan and I, we rented a car in Washington, and as we're driving to the hotel, I said, look, I'd like to slip by and see the monument and the bill and of course Pat who played in the NHL he didn't want to see it. he just wanted to get back to the hotel and catch some Z's so wouldn't you know I said no come on we'll just swing by and I'm driving well I got us lost in Washington DC and we were in a very very bad area and I didn't know whether to be more afraid of what was outside the car or who was in the car but that wasn't a play, but, but we actually laughed about it later. You had to reflect back on almost 40 years. Is there a, an area of the sports world that you would like to have done more in that you kind of missed? Yeah, I, I, looking back at it, I would love to have done more play-by-play. -play. Uh, I think that's where the real joy of it is. Plus, it's, I think your career can last a little longer that way. Now, with the way television is structured, if, if you've made a pretty good salary for a lot of years, as you get older, you become vulnerable, and I don't want to be put in that situation, so, um, but play-by-play -play is a little different. You can kind of adjust your schedule. Boy, if you want to do a lot of games, you can. If you want to do fewer, you can. So, in retrospect, but really, no real regrets. I mean, it's, it beats working for a living. Well, you've done it so well for so long, and well, thank congratulations. You. Thanks for coming to Jamestown. Oh, happy to be here. No, I like I say, Jamestown, I, I remember when uh, Jamestown played Orchard Park in the playoffs a few years ago on an icy field, and I was one of the few people sitting in the stands. I just came down to watch that game, and, and Jamestown had almost had it won, and Orchard Park kicked a field goal like a line drive sideways field goal to, to, to win it, but uh, uh, but no, I've always thought of Jamestown fondly in terms of their sports teams and their commitment to their sports teams. And your commitment to Buffalo is extraordinary, so thank you, Ed Kippard. Thank you. It's been great. Oh, thank you. Yep.